Good evening, Paul Guasc. Hello. Your novel, La Palme dans le Coeur, published in French by Les Editions La Croisée, explores the multiple dimensions of expression, pushes the lines of language beyond letters and words through the use of other medium. For instance, I perceived page 14 as the power of time unleashed. How did you gather all these di dimensions of expression in La Palme dans le Coeur, mm. and why? W when I was writing the novel, I had the feeling that the, m the more languages I used to write this novel, the more things I could achieve writing it, you know? So, um, I have studied literature and I also have studied arts and like I have so many interests and when writing La Palme I had the f I also had the feeling okay Paul there are some things that you won't be able to say just to explain to tell just with words so let's try to find the language which is going to help you to say what you want to say you know I think that when writing you always have to deal with at least me, it's something that happens to me that when writing, I always have to deal with frustration. You know, that um, I never find the exact word that I want to use for the thought that I had, you know. So I, I thought that if I used different languages, maybe I could deal better with this frustration, you know, and I could maybe approach the complexity of reality also with a complexity of languages. I think that's it. Mm. When we meet the protagonist, we are thrown into an after. Mm. A world that has been forever changed, yet we do not know why. And this unknown opens a space where the reader can't help but make hypotheses. Mm -hmm. And those hypotheses are personal. <coughs> to me, they reflected my perception of the world. And I felt that it was you who pulled those out of me. Mm -hmm. How did you create such a space? And what does the space of interaction between the author and the reader means to you? Yeah. F the thing is that for me, writing and reading are not different things. And when I approach writing, um, I do it the same way I approach reading. I will tell you how. It's that I think that when when I write, I work a lot. You know, I, I mean, to imagine and to create, it's not something at easy at all. We sometimes um, we sometimes think that creating and to be like imaginative and creative, it's something easy or something that you do um, because you like and all these like topics that we have around like creation but to create and to imagine it's something like so difficult and at the same time it's something that it's not easy at all and it depends on a lot of things and a lot of privileges of course so i think that writing is working in a sense i love working with that but it's working it's an effort and i also think that reading must be an effort it must be something which is not passive it i think that reading is a very active act at least that's how I try to read and the people I read the authors I read is because they are asking me to write with them you know to complete their work or to yet to dialogue with their work during um, the reading so when I when I write and this is also a consequence I mean when I write I have the feeling that what I'm doing is creating a space where me and the reader are going to find each other. So like for me, writing is a way to approaching other people. For me, writing, it's not at all something that it is individual or that it's like related to solitude or like to um, loneliness at all. Like when I write, I'm not thinking about a reader. I'm not thinking about, okay, I want people to understand this or I want people to understand that but I'm thinking all the time about finding someone, you know, like I think that what I'm doing is creating, is creating like the possibility to find someone and to, to find someone in another time and another place, which I don't know at all, but I write with that hope. And I think that's very really related to, to reading because when I read, 
I mean, I don't know, for example, I love Lee Spector. So when I read Lee Spector, I have the feeling that I'm, I'm meeting here, you know, that I'm, uh, uh, yeah, that I have the possibility to, to have an exchange with here at some point, yeah. Why is the after a more interesting focus to you than the before? Um, can it be separated, the after from the before, the after world from what happened before? Hmm. I would say that to just like when I was writing Napalm, I had the feel, uh, I mean, I, I thought, okay, I thought that there was a problem, that we were always, always, always thinking about a world without us. I mean, when we are thinking about the after, we are always thinking about what is going to happen with the world when we are not here. So dystopias, mm, the world is ending and all this stuff. And I was trying just like to f not to focus on what's going to happen with the world without us, but what it's going to happen with us if we don't have a world. So that's what I was trying to do with the novel. And that's what I was trying to ask myself when writing it. What, what happens with us if we don't have a world to live in? And I think that's something that it's already happening to us right now in so many uh, places in the world. And it's something that happens to these people. So to focus on the after, it's not a way to say, okay, the world is going to end. We are not going to live anymore. This is a disaster because this is not This is, this is not a creative thought, this is not a potential thought. This is an easy, very easy thought. So, I, so when writing the novel I was thinking, okay, what happens if there is an us, you know, if there is a we, but we don't have a world like to, f to, to find ourselves in. So this is why I try to focus on the after. Besides the use of different medium of language, the book's chapters alternate short texts, journal entry, letters, which take us to different levels of intimacy with the characters. How did that affect your writing of the novel? Did you start with that will or did it appear while you were writing? <clears throat> I, I didn't start with a will because for me writing is something related to to joy to pleasure to gain so i have the feeling that i have so many things in my life that are already under control and that are like very classified you know so for me writing it's like maybe the thing that i do that it's more spontaneous and not controlled at all and I think that the most honest answer to this question is that I wanted to have fun writing the novel, you know, um, and I had so much fun writing that novel. And, you know, I was writing about this character and I thought, how would this character write a letter? Let's explore it. And how would this character write a poem? Or how would this mother talk to her son that has never spoken to during um, her life, you know. So it was, it was a thing related to pleasure, to having fun, to exploring, to, yeah, to understanding literature as a game, as a place where I can just like try everything. And sometimes I fail, you know. There are so many things that I tried that are not in the novel anymore, but some of them It, w it was like, okay, I like that. We are going to keep this because I'm saying things, the things I wanted to say, you know. Mm. The novel has a strong poetic dimension to it, both in the story and in its form. You wrote two poetry volumes, Tantagana and La Part del Foc, in 2018 and 2020, before La Palme dans le Coeur. Mm. How did these two poetry books influence your writing mm -hmm. of the novel and we often think of poetry as being like the ultimate form of freedom mm -hmm. um, 
what freedom did writing a novel give you compared mm. to poetry? I think that, okay, so the first question, the first, the first answer of the first question would be that for me, like what I learned about poetry and I think it's a learning that it's going to be with me the rest of my life is that language is my is my material you know and that i don't want to make it transparent i don't want to hide it anywhere i want language to be i want to show everyone that i'm writing stories and that stories are important but without language there are no there are not possible there are no possible stories but the, not just like stories that we read, but also stories that we write, uh, that, that we live, sorry. So without language, it's not that we cannot read or we cannot write, it's that we cannot live our own stories, you know? So in a sense, poetry taught me that I, I, I don't have to show, I, I don't have to hide my language, I have to show it. And I would say that the freedom that offers me prose, like to write in prose, not in poetry, is maybe the possibility to de develop like stories that maybe with poetry I have a strongest level of condensation or like or and with novel like when writing novels I have the possibility just like go very, very deep in stories that maybe with poetry I cannot. I'm not saying that without with poetry you cannot do it. I'm saying that I cannot do it with poetry, you know, and that with um, novels, like when writing novels, I can go deeper somewhere that I don't really know what place it is, but I like to be there. Hmm. C'est comme ça. Lorsque les gens disparaissent, ils emportent leur rage de vieux chiens malades. C'est quelque chose que grand-père disait, il n'y a pas de Dieu plus puissant que le regard des autres. There's no God more powerful than the gaze of others. Mm -hmm. What does that sentence free? What does it imprison? I think that Napalm, and that's the reason why the main character has no we don't know the name of the main character. And with this decision, what I was trying to say is that, okay, guys, now you're going to read the story of, of this young boy, a story written in first person. So you are going to um, listen to his voice the whole time, but you will never know his name, which is the only thing in our lives that, don't that doesn't change during time. If, not, if, if we don't decide to, to change our name, which is something possible, of course, but if we don't decide to change our name, it's the only thing that it's never going to change. It's the only thing that is going to stay during all this very long, long time, which is life. And with that, I was trying to say, okay, guys, this story is not about this guy. Maybe you will think that, but this story is about how all the people around him create his life. So in which sense this idea of auto-determination, of auto, I don't know how to say it in English, of, yes, of like creating your own life is a complete lie, you know? I mean, we are so, so crossed and so um, created by the gaze of others. And I think that's what I wanted to ex explore with Napalm, that a life is nothing without the others, but a life is also very painful because of the others. And I think this sentence has a little bit the, con the condensation of this idea. Mm -hmm. In Festa, a short movie you wrote, mm -hmm. directed by Noemi Varga, the voice says, the world is continually made and remade. Mm -hmm. How do words affect this fabrication? And this destruction. I think that we 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 have limited words, right? And we always say that that the words are like 
the possibility of our world and at the same time the limits of our world mm -hmm. we all know that of course but i think that the magic thing that ha that ha that happens with words or, or like the reason why i am in love with language and literature and writing is that they are limited but their combination if you play if you are playful and you accept like the what they are offering to you mm. you can do like i'm not saying that you can do everything because i i, I don't believe in this idea that um creating and writing is an act of freedom i don't think that but i do think that if you are playful and you are accept and you accept what they offer to you and their limits you can really do incredible things with that and yeah so i would say that yeah <laughs> finally what book what author would you invite us to discover to read tonight okay maybe it's very obvious because everyone knows here but i think that it makes a lot of sense to say her like to to say her name right now because of all the things that we have been talking during this interview because i think it I have learned so many of these things with her and she's Clarice Lispector, mm -hmm. she's a Brazilian author, she's the Brazilian author and yeah, I think that my writing with, wouldn't be like it is without reading Clarice Lispector. So. In a particular book you would recommend? Um, I love all her books but if I had to say one I don't know the translation, the, the translated title in English. Then it's just say it. And in Catalan is A Prop del Cor Salvatge. It's her first book, her first novel. She wrote it when she was 23. And it's very beautiful because um, if you have read books of Lispector to go there, it's very interesting to see that all her world is there. Like, And then she, the rest of her life, she's just exploring it. And if you want to start with Lispector, I think it's a perfect way to start with her because you are going to find there like all her writing. And that's beautiful because reading one book, her first book, you see her like perspective of the world. And I think that's that's beautiful. And I think that's also beautiful that reading Lispector changes your way to understand life and writing. And I think that's the most, I mean, that's the aim of every author, right? To change the idea of writing and the idea of the world that the reader has. So I think this is why we should read this Spectre. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you. <laughs>